As we ran back, the rustling of leaves resounded through the night streets. When we reached the hill, Saito-san stopped suddenly in his tracks. What's the matter? He watched as, below the hill, the town of Fushimi was within eye distance from the top, and it was lit ablaze with a roaring flame. I gasped at the sight. No! The Shinsengumi were protecting the magistrate, but now he was on fire? Anyway, Yamazaki were there. I could see a color of bitterness in Sarto-san's. And well, the... <laughs> There's a word that shouldn't be there. I could see a color of bitterness in Sarto-san's well-being of his comrades. If the Fushimi Magistrate were to fall, then... It would mean the Shinsugumi were now driven from the town they spent four years protecting. For Saito-san, a man who always held his duty to the Shinsengumi above all else. This must have been the most regrettable feeling. <laughs> I struggled to find meaningful words to say, so instead I just hung my head low. His expression warped, and I could swear that I could hear his his teeth grinding. Saito took one last look down at the burning scenery of Fushimi below. Then... ユキムラ。我々はこれから大阪城へ向かうぞ。あそこには総大将の吉信君、そして松本先生や近藤局長、総司がいる。おそらく副長や他の大使たちもそこにいるはずだ。決してはぐれんようついてこい。Saito and I led the rest of his men towards Osaka Castle. No sooner than had we reached the base of the mountain, however, we encountered an enemy patrol. <laughs> Several gunshots echoed through the forest. I wasn't sure if they were an actual attack or just a warning. <laughs> The crack of a gunshot sounded again, closer this time, and I jumped. Right. I shrunk down as small as I possibly could and held my hands desperately over my mouth. I'm sorry. The gunfire had scared me, but if it but if it made too much noise, then I could endanger Saito-san and the other Shinsengumi. Eventually, the sun did set, and the forest fell into darkness. The gunshot slowed, then stopped. So suddenly, it was very quiet. これだけ暗くなれば、狙いをつけるのは難しいだろう。暗闇では卵目にも時間がかかる。敵型の目を盗んで下山するなら今のうちだ。うん、let's go. We stepped out of the thicket we'd been hiding in and headed off down the mountain. <laughs> we 
We hadn't been walking for long when the gun started again, likely because of our footsteps. This time, however, they seemed to be shooting anywhere and everywhere, not directly at us. Can they even see us? It seems Artisan had been right about a loss of precision once night had fallen. They could see shadows moving and hear our footsteps, but between the darkness and the trees, actually finding us was proving difficult. We might actually be able to join up with the rest of the men at this rate. So it was him. Hishashiburi You! Of all the times we could have encountered Kazuma, why now? I didn't realize I'd been frozen to the spot by s Frozen to the stopped. What? I didn't realize I'd been frozen to the spot by stepped between Kazuma and myself. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd been frozen in place. When Sartasan stepped between Kazuma and myself, that line makes more sense. As he spoke, Sartasan drew his sword. But. There was steel in his tone this time. He chuckled again as he drew his own sword. Gazo's hair turned white. He looked almost godly, like a lion. そういう。貴様は以前この俺に居合いとやらを見守ろうとしたことがあったが、せっかくあの時見逃してやったというわざわざ死にに来るとか、水凶なやつ。It wasn't just how he looked though. He desired his desire to kill was fiercely radiating. Amagiri had said that Kazuma was even more powerful than he was, as Saitasan had been clearly outmatched by Amagiri. Just watching from afar makes me understand that this man knew what he was talking about. Kazuma possessed powers far beyond what even someone like Saitasan could hope to fight against. So why? Saitasan made the first move. His sword raised high above his over his head. He charged forward and brought it down towards Cosmo's right shoulder. But when the sword reached its destination, Cosmo was simply gone. Saitosan snapped his head around looking for his opponent. A silver blade flew through the night towards Saitosan. I heard the horrible wet sound of a blade passing through flesh, and blood splattered to the ground. Sartasan grunted and swung his sword back towards Kazuma, but again he cut only air. The demon started, darted around behind him, his sword glistening with gore. More blood dripped onto the forest floor. Sartasan grounded his teeth, his eyes wide with pain, but he kept his feet and tired desperately to match to match Cosmo's attack. Oh, and tried desperately to match Cosmo's attack. Okay. But his foe was too fast, and as soon as Saitasan had found him, he had disappeared or struck again. The 
The night air was filled with grunts of pain and the sickening hiss of steel through flesh. Every inch of his clothes was soaked in blood, but still Saitasan glared at Cosmo with fiery hatred. Two of the men who'd been watching leapt towards Kazuma as Saitasan fell back. Kazuma's sword shimmered, and the two men fell to the ground. He didn't even blink. His skill with the sword was nothing short of superhuman. His blade moved too fast for my eyes to catch. So the sun said nothing and tightened his blood stained hands around the hilt of his sword. He ran towards Kazuma, all of his strength behind this desperate attack. Kazuma blade sliced across his body, and blood rained down onto the dirt. <laughs> he stood still, but blood loss, fatigue were taking their toll, and even I could see he was getting slower. Nonetheless, his hands stayed clasped around his sword, even if his arms could no longer lift it. Even against Amagiri, he hadn't been beaten so completely. I know he, he had just told me to stay back, but... Saito-san! Please, you have to stop! I'll... I'll just go with him! Then he'll leave you and your men alone! この後どれだけ切り合ってもこの俺の優位は揺るがぬ。それに気づかぬほど間抜けでもあるまい。なあ、ここで逃げたところで黙っていれば誰にもわからん。女鬼の護衛を押せつかっていたが、力を及ばず
He laughed as he drove his sword into Saito's body. その大切なものとは何だ尻尾けな誇りか犬の餌にもならぬ名誉とやらか答えてみろ人間虫以下の愛称の生き物が何を大切だと抜かす He no longer had even enough strength to lift his arms and block Kazuma's attacks. No, please, stop! I couldn't stand to just sit and watch, so I unsheathed my Kodachi. And I charged straight for Kazuma. However... Cosmo saw me in the corner of his eye and kicked me to the floor, and I couldn't even buy sight to some time. Just then, I watched as sight to body slumped and his body dropped to the ground. <sighs> From here, it seemed like he was still breathing. But at this rate, it's only a matter of time before he would lose enough blood to die. Then a tiny vial dropped from Saito-san's pocket, twinkling against his kimono. Oh no, that's... Uh... It was a bottle of the Water of Life. Saito san lifted his bloody face to glare at Kazuma. Then. <laughs> With his last bit of strength, he grabbed the bottle. I. Well, stop, Saito. You don't need that serum! Even without the water of life, Saito san, you are very strong! Sato-san popped the lid off the bottle, and he gulped the contents of the bottle. Sato-san! No! I screamed so desperately it strained my throat. The next instance, the scars all over Saito-san's whole body began to regenerate. <laughs> and then... There stood a fury, his hair is shimmering white. The sound effect is missing for this transformation, as well as Cosmos from earlier and Amagiris. Anyway, he seems surprised by the sudden changes on his body, but just seeing his cuts and gashes to heal, he was renewed with a confident energy. <laughs> Saito-san's expression didn't change. It, with a slow hand, he wiped the dried blood from his face, and when he spoke, his voice was quiet and calm. Nanとでも言え、これが俺の、俺にとっての誇りの形だ。he lifted his sword to a fighting stance. That sort of attitude was just what I would have expected from Saito-san, but 
for him to become a fury simply because the Shinsegumi had ordered him to protect me was horrible. I had turned him into a monster. この俺の意志も考えも持ち合わせぬ。ただの犬だな。犬で構わ。己が正しいと信じた者に命を捧げられれば本望だ。正しいと信じた者。落ち目の幕府と共に消えゆく時代錯誤の老子集団がか。Sueta's son threw himself towards Kazuma in the same breath, his words almost a snarl. The demon deflected his attack with ease and smiled back. He struck again and again, and it seemed that had closed the gap between them, at least somewhat. Bit by bit, Saito-san's well-aimed blows drove Kazuma back. The tension between them was almost palpable, like the air before a thunderstorm. <laughs> From time to time, Kazuma landed a blow on his, to, of his own on Saito-san, but those wounds closed almost immediately, thanks to his new fury blood. I'm sorry, Cosma. I can't quite hear you. Your voice lines are so low. Just when Cosma shouted that, a familiar voice echoed through the night. あまぎ。何の用だ。せっかくの宴を邪魔しに来たのか。殺馬藩の方があなたを呼んでいますよ。早くお戻りなさい。人間ごときか俺に命令だと。会いたいのなら貴様から出向けと伝えておけ。ここ
the sound effect was also missing from this one. With a shrug, his white hair melted back into its original color, and the red went out of his eyes. His voice and manner were, were as they had always been, suggesting nothing of the ordeal just, he'd just been through. I felt my heart rise to my throat, and I turned away before the sight of him made me burst into tears. Ah. Sanansan and Heske had already given up their humanity to become furious, and now Saito-san had just joined them. My heart felt like lead. <laughs> <laughs>